So welcome back, and now that we know how to build a pedigree, let's look at how to interpret the pedigree so that we can figure out how traits are passed from generation to generation, how genotypes and phenotypes show up in those generations, and how we can interpret the results of the pedigree. So let's begin with a basic pedigree breakdown and this is a three generation pedigree of a family that has Huntington's disease. Huntington's disease is a disease of the nervous system. It's an autosomal dominant gene and to remind you what autosomal mean that means it's a gene that is carried on one of the first 22 pairs of the chromosomes in the human karyotype and it is not uh, related to the sex chromosomes. So this is not a sex link trait. This is an autosomal trait. And this trait happens to be dominant. And to remind you, we have alleles. And these alleles are a capital H for Huntington's disease. And the lowercase h is the normal gene. And so the recessive trait is normal. And the dominant trait is having the disease. So what we have here is we have a male and female, and the male is heterozygous with Huntington's disease, and the female has two lowercase h's, which makes her homozygous recessive, and this means she does not have Huntington's disease. Now our job is to interpret this information, and based on the clues we have in the pedigree, try to determine the genotypes and phenotypes of the other individuals in this pedigree. So I have uh, enlarged the pedigree a little bit and we've broken it down a little clearer so we can look at it. And what we have here, again, we have a heterozygous male with Huntington's disease who mated with a normal female, a female who does not have Huntington's disease because she is homozygous recessive. Now they have a daughter and they have three sons and we know information about the middle son. The middle son has is also homozygous recessive like the mother and uh, we don't know anything about individual two, three, five, six, or seven and our job is to try to figure out what their genotypes might be and from their genotypes come to an understanding of what their phenotypes are. So what we absolutely know is the mother can only give away little h's. So we're going to put the mother's allele in each of these individuals. And we can't put anything in this in individual number five in generation two because she married into the family and we don't know anything about her parents. And we'll talk about how we can decipher her information in a little bit. Uh, also number seven, she married into the family and she uh, has no information about her parents, but we'll see what we can find out from the other information within the pedigree. Now, what we also know is that individual 2 has to receive information from her father. And unfortunately, we don't know what she got from her father. But what we can do is we can go down to her son in Generation 3. Now, he gets a capital H and a lowercase h. He is heterozygous. We know he can only get the little h from his dad. So that means he has to get the big h from his mom. So using the evidence in the pedigree, we can de determine the genotype of individual 2 as being capital H, little h. Now let's skip number 3, individual 3, for a second and come over here to individual 4. Individual 4 is homozygous recessive, can only give a little h to each of his offspring. 
So we know he gives a little h to individual 3, 3, and he gives a little h to individual 3, 4. Now, when we look at individual 5, do we know anything about individual 5? Well, if we look at her offspring, we know that she has to be able to get a big H, and this big H here has to come from the mother. So this big H has to come from the mother. And since we don't know anything else about this individual, we're going to leave the rest of that blank for, for now. When we go over here to individual generation 2 number 6 and we look at his son we know that his son has to get a capital H from both parents so the dad has to have a capital H and the mom also has to have a capital H so here we are in this situation here is there anything else we can put information in for for right now we're just going to straighten this out a little bit. There we go. Over here, in generation 3 individual 1, we know that he has to get a little h from his dad. So let's move on and see what else we can figure out. So if we look at each of these individuals that we aren't sure of on the genotype, what can we do? Well, Individual 3, we know he has to get an H, little h, from his mom. But we don't know which of the alleles he's going to get from his dad. So what we're going to do is we're going to place a question mark in that space. Because we're not sure. We don't have enough evidence because we don't have any offspring to base this information on. And we know that he got the lowercase h from his mom, but we really don't know which allele he's going to get from his dad. When we look at generation 2 individual 5, we have the same situation. We do know that these little h's in generation 3 can have to come from the dad, but we don't know what the other allele is for individual 5. So we're also going to put a question mark there. The same goes with individual number 7 in generation 2. We do not have enough information to determine what that possible allele is, so we're going to put that question mark. Therefore, we also have to put a question mark over here in generation 3 individual 1 because we know the little h came from the dad, but we're not sure which allele is going to come from the mom. When we look at generation 3, individual 4, we know that the little h came from the dad, but we're not sure what's going to come from the mom. So we're going to put a question mark there as well. And lastly, individual generation 3, individual 5, we don't know anything about his mom and therefore her mom therefore we are going to put a double question mark in that situation now the only way to determine what this individual might have is to get more information once she has offspring so that's what we're going to do in this in each of these cases we're going to look at what evidence we have in the pedigree that allows us to show what alleles are passed from generation to generation. Please make sure you visit the third video on pedigrees where we will look at a sex link trait and we will look at a multiple allele trait for blood typing so that you can get more information on interpreting pedigrees. Thank you very much.